All right, this is going to be a bit of a deep dive video into my Trevenkov effect project, um, as a few people have been asking for a bit more information on how it all works. So what I'll do is I'll run you through sort of the hardware you need to get started, and we'll jump into the code, um, show how that all works, and then I'll do um, a bit of a dive into the recording process and how the songs come out sounding the way they do. Um, so in terms of hardware, the setup is actually pretty simple. All you need is one of these um, Arduino Giga boards. Um, now I've used the Giga due to the fact that all of the GPIO ports um, on this board are, have interrupts available. Um, if you're using a board like the Uno um, or the Mega, they only have two and four ports available for interrupts. So if you're only using one or two of these um, Geiger counter sensors, then the, those shields should be fine. Uh, but in my case, I'm using five of these, so um, that's why I've elected for the Giga. So the Giga is about $120, $130 Australian. Um, you can probably get this cheaper off, off Amazon. Um, now I've also used this um, seed grove shield. So um, originally I was using just a simple breadboard and jumper wires. However, um, it became too difficult to kind of manage um, you know, putting it together, moving it around. So these make it really simple to connect um, sensors and other things to um, the Arduino. Um, and then I have these Geiger counter shields. Now, these are available from quite a few resellers on Amazon, um, a few other online stores. They only cost about 50 or 60 Australian dollars. Um, originally, when I started this project about 12 years ago, I was using a DF robot um, Geiger counter shield, which cost about three to 400 bucks. So these are much more cost effective. Um, and then finally, just a few um, servo leads. Um, these are very, very cheap. You can get them from any electronics or hobby store. Um, and then finally, this is completely optional um, if you're not comfortable handling radioactive sources. Um, but I've got a radioactive disc um, of Strontium-90. Um, these are available from quite a few different educational websites. Um, and cost around, this one cost around 300 Australian. So um, now safety is obviously a factor. So I keep it in this lead, um, lead storage pot um, outside in a locked uh, environment. And I only ever handle it for kind of a few minutes at a time. And generally use tongs when I'm doing it, um, just uh, to be safe. These are very low radiation. So there's low risk involved um, with this, but I just like to be safe. Um, so now I'll assemble it, show you how it all fits together, uh, and then we'll jump into the code. So now that that's all put together, time to jump into the code. So this is the sketch for the Arduino board. Um, as I kind of mentioned in the, the first part of the video, um, the board you select um, has a bearing on the number of interrupts available. Um, as I've used the Giga, I've got five available. Um, I've got more than five, but in this case, I'm only using five. So we set up the input pins um, at two, three, four, five, and six. Um, and then we just have some um, arrays that are tracking the number of clicks per minute. So that's every time um, the Geiger counter detects um, radiation, it sends a click. Um, so we're just keeping track of those clicks per minute, which gives us the um, micro sieverts per hour uh, calculation, which I'll dive into in a minute. Um, now I'm using a kind of a leaky bucket algorithm um, to track this. Um, essentially, the more radiation there is, the higher the bucket um, fills. 
um, which translates to um, a higher pitch um, in the note that's sent to Ableton Live. Um, and I'll jump into that a bit later as well. Uh, just some setup variables here. Um, nothing particularly interesting about that. Uh, some more setup stuff. Um, now I have, there's two, sort of two parts to this. There's the Arduino sketch, uh, which runs on the board. Um, and then there's a processing sketch, which um, uses serial, a serial port to read um, information sent from the Arduino, which then translates that information into MIDI, um, which then sends notes to Ableton Live. Um, and I'll demo that in a minute as well. Um, now we set up the pins um, to be input pins. We attach an interrupt to each of those pins. Um, now for some reason this can't be done um, with a loop. Um, it has to have one function um, per pin, per interrupt. Um, I don't know C++ very well, so I'm not sure if there's a way around that. If you know, I'd love to hear any suggestions. Um, so then we, we kind of jump into a loop. Um, now this does a calculation every um, five seconds, uh, I think it is. Every five seconds we, we figure out what the micro sievers per hour um, is and I've, <coughs> excuse me, I've put some comments in the code around um, roughly what that translates to in real world terms. So if I've done my calculations correctly, and I hope I have um, the equivalent of running this for a few hours is the equivalent of one dental x-ray. Uh, again, feel free to correct me if I'm wrong. Um, now we kind of reset the, um, the bucket capacity, uh, every few seconds as well. Um, basically just, uh, in the leaky bucket algorithm, there's a concept of a drip rate. So it depletes, um, over a, a certain period of time. Um, this does essentially the same thing. Um, and we've just got a little delay of about 10 milliseconds between um, between each loop. Now we jump into processing. So, <coughs> excuse me again. Processing has been around for 20 odd years and it's something that I've used quite a lot in my creative coding projects. Um, now I'm, I'm using um, a library called the MIDI bus to do all the MIDI um, kind of stuff. Um, it's quite old, hasn't been touched in a long time, and there's probably a more modern way of doing this, um, but I just elected to go with what was familiar. So if I run the sketch, it's a fairly simple interface. Uh, all you do is select the uh, Arduino board from the list. I've not connected it yet. Um, I'll do that in a minute. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and I've got this list of uh, control channel elements. Um, I've not used these on a lot of the tracks, um, only some of the more recent ones. Um, and I'll explain a bit more about that later once we get into the, the recording side of things. Um, so essentially it's pretty simple. Um, the loop just reads in um, data from the serial port. Um, it splits um, the messages into certain parts. The message format is fairly simple. Uh, if we jump back here, um, it outputs a pin, and then a pin number, um, and then the micro secrets per hour number, um, and then the bucket uh, capacity. So um, I'm using micro secrets per hour and bucket capacity to do different things. So micro secrets per hour um, can be the, the pitch um, and bucket capacity can be the note length or, or the velocity really just depends on the track. Um, 
So jumping back to processing, we're splitting that message uh, into a few parts and we're essentially um, mapping these numbers to a scale. Um, I've just used a scale of 30 to 34 um, and a velocity of 100 to 127. So this gives you variation in pitch, but not too much variation um, and variation in, in note intensity but but not too much um, so every time there's sort of there's a message we create a note uh, so the note is in this class it's fairly simple um, it just checks if it's running or not um, checks the the duration and then either sends a note on uh, or sends a note off so for, yeah, very simple stuff um, and the rest of this code is pretty much just devoted to the user interface. So uh, nothing particularly interesting there. Um, and now I'll show you how this connects with Ableton Live. So on Mac OS, this may differ for your uh, particular device. I've just set up a, um, a virtual MIDI port um, called the Trankov effect and in Ableton Live I basically select the MIDI from and then I select a channel so the channel relates to the pin um, so pin 2 is channel 1, pin 3 is channel 2 etc etc okay now everything's hooked up you can probably hear the Geiger counters chirping in the background. Um, so what I've done, I've run the processing sketch and I select the Arduino from the device list. Hop back into Ableton Live and you'll hear all the MIDI notes coming through uh, and triggering the instruments on each of these channels. Now for pretty much every Cherenkov effect song. Uh, I've used this wavetable instrument, so this is an Ableton native instrument, um, which basically lets you create any sort of synth sound that you can imagine. Um, what I like about it is you can use these LFOs um, and other automations to um, give the track a bit more um, dynamism, a bit more randomness. Um, so this is my latest track called BR3, um, which has heavily been influenced by bands like Warteca or Square Pusher. Um, each channel, each instrument is somewhat similar. They all use wavetables, um, apart from the kicks, which are just um, kick samples with a bit of distortion on them. So if I now grab the radioactive disc I was showing you earlier, bring it closer to the shields, you'll hear it really starting to kick off. The other part of this is the control channel events um, that are triggered um, by this interface. Um, so if I dive into the MIDI map here, the MIDI map basically allows you to map um, certain MIDI messages to um, different parts of Ableton Live. So maybe changing a frequency, a volume, um, balancing the, the left and right. It can be pretty much anything um, that's highlighted blue. As you can see, um, I've mapped each of these events um, to a particular wavetable, they all map to the frequency um, uh, dial on each of the, the wavetables. Um, so if I dive back into the code, um, basically every on every frame there's a controller change um, and I send a random value 
So that will basically map that random value from 0 to 127 to uh, the frequency um, on each of those instruments. So if I turn this off, hook it up again, and jump back, you'll notice it's not actually changing. Uh, that will change once we record. So you can see the frequency just going up and down um, with each frame. Makes it just sound a bit more, uh, a bit more chaotic, a bit more random. So now if we hit record, we'll be able to record all those notes coming through. a few bars worth should be able to hear the pitch changing as the millisieverts micro sieverts per hour value increases you can see them slowly going up there so if we stop just disconnect that to keep the noise down and you'll see the the pitch starting to go up just around here um, generally I like to quantize the notes, so if you just right click and choose quantize, that'll shift all the notes into um, the right place. Um, for the most part, I don't really touch any of the notes. The performance is the performance and I'm kind of done. If there's anything I don't really like or that annoys me or I think that's missing, I'll kind of add in a note um, here, here or there or remove a note here or there. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it. So thanks for watching. Um, if you've got any comments, uh, questions, just let me know. Um, and I'll try and get back to you. Thanks.